It's a good day to worship Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. At least two people excited about Jesus. There you go. All right. If you don't mind joining me and uh, as we lift up the name of Jesus, if you can rise, if you feel comfortable, we'll praise him for who he is.
is a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone and I'm no longer a saint to fear mother's womb you have chosen me your love has called my name I've been born again to your family your blood flows through my name I'm no longer
accompanies the melody.
Praise the Lord. I'm just wondering, is there a praise on your lips today? I'd like to hear some praises that are coming that are inside of you, but the Lord wants to hear them. Go ahead. I just want, just want to go around the room and say, I praise Jesus for or because. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Deliverance. New life. Mercy. Yes. Forgiveness. Amen. Yes. I praise Him. Yes. I praise Him for His church. takes away fear. Yes, he does. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Church, I want us to understand here this morning that every time you praised Him, you were that much closer to complete freedom. There is freedom in praising God. Amen? He defeats our enemies while we praise Him. While we lift Him up, He is taking care of business. Hallelujah. So as you have chosen to praise Him this morning, as you have chosen to exalt Him, the, the heavenly realm, things are being loosed on your behalf. Things are, being, things are being sent down. Angels are being sent down on your behalf to take care of business in your life. Chains are being broken off of family members, of friends. We believe that praise helps us to overcome. And we will be overcomers. Hallelujah. These next few moments, we're going to make this house a house of prayer. We're going to seek the face of Jesus. If you want to keep praising Him through song, keep praising Him. But if you want to come up and you want prayer, you want somebody to pray with you, come to the front. We want to lay hands on you. We want to anoint you. We want to believe God with you this morning. We want to trust God with you. If you want to just come down to the altar and just kneel and just seek His face, you're welcome to do that as well. But let's take this time to truly seek Him. If you want to come up and let us praise with you, come up. We'll rejoice. We'll say a prayer rejoicing over your life. But let's make this house a house of prayer and worship right now. Amen.
blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine of salvation purchase of God
think he's wonderful. Give him some praise right now. Yes. Woo! Amen. Amen. To conclude our prayer time this morning, I'm going to ask all the kids to come forward to the front. We're going to pray over them and bless them as they, they head back to Children's Church this morning. So come on up. Come on, all kids, come on up. Yeah, Bentley, that means you too, buddy. <laughs> all right. Praise God. Aren't these some beautiful kids? Praise God. Wasn't, wasn't it fun watching them worship this morning? Amen. All right, let's pray. Just stretch out your hand to them. We're just going to pray over them and just pray a prayer of blessing. Father, we are so grateful, Lord, for these kids, Father. So thankful, Jesus, that you have put praise in their hearts. God, that you, Lord, love these children. God, you love them with an unconditional love. God, ever faithful love. God, I pray, Lord God, that you would bless them, that you would keep them. God, that you would place your hand of protection over their lives. We know, God, it's a rough world out there. And the world wants to corrupt them, Lord God. But, Lord, we know that your spirit is greater than what the world could throw at them. So, God, just saturate them, God, with your spirit today. Let the blood of Jesus Christ be over them. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory for their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Kids can be dismissed. This morning. All right. We're going to take up the offering now, whenever the kids get out here, and then we're going to open up the the service to our our guests. All right, let's pray for the offering this morning. Father, we thank you so much. God, you give so much to us. Everything you've given to us, Lord God, you said here, I want you to be a steward of this. Lord, I thank you that you have made us stewards, Lord, of your resources, of your finances, of even this building. And Father God, we want to be good stewards. Help us, Lord. To be generous stewards, Lord, with our time, with our energy, with our finances, with our resources. And help us to honor you, Lord God, in everything that we do, in everything that we give, in every way that we serve. God, we just give you praise, Lord, for this opportunity to sow into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. I said, we're in for a treat today. I'm really looking forward to hearing from these ladies this morning and uh, what God is doing in their lives. And so I'm just, I'm, without further ado, I'm just going to invite them to come up and let the Spirit lead you this morning. So Bethany is the leader, and I'll let them share with you who they are. So. Good morning. How are we doing today? Good. 
Hi, my name is Bethany. I'm the choir director at Teen Challenge Women's Ministry here in Topeka, Kansas. Well, not really here, but here in, here in Kansas. Um, who in here in one way or another has been affected by addiction? Okay. Who in here has ever heard of Teen Challenge before? Great. Well, Teen Challenge um, was started in 1958 by the late pastor David Wilkerson, whose heart grieves for those who are lost in addiction. The whole Teen Challenge story can be found in the book The Cross and the Switchblade, which later turned into a movie. Through this journey, Pastor Wilkerson came face to face with the cold, harsh realities of addiction. And truth is, these, these realities have not gotten any, worse, or any better. They've only gotten worse. Reality is, the average for the first time marijuana use was the age of 14 years old. Reality is, one in five inmates in the U.S. are incarcerated for drugs. Reality is, 2.5 million Americans die annually from drug and alcohol overdose. Reality is, the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Do y'all want to know what reality is? Reality is letting your body go at the age of 11 because you found acceptance and reassurance through the ungodly pleasures of men. Reality is taking your first sip of alcohol at the age of 15 to prove to them people who put labels on you that you could handle it. Reality is leaving your family behind for a man who beats you every day and just allowing it to happen because you already believe that since you lost your family, the only thing you had left to lose was your life. How do I know that's reality? Because that was me. Do you want to know what reality is? <clears throat> Excuse me. Reality is taking medication while pregnant only to lead you down a 10-year addiction. Reality is using that same legal prescription as an excuse to continue your use and eventually losing your children. Reality is letting the man you thought was the love of your life use you and abuse you for his sick pleasures. How do I know that's reality? Because that's me. Reality is when all you want to do is sing and hold your little girl, but you can't because there's a court order by a judge saying you can't be around your own child alone. Reality is being so lost in addiction again that your family wants nothing to do with you and you're living in a camper with nothing and feeling all alone and like you want to just go ahead and die. Reality is losing the best relationship in your life and that was my relationship with God and turning my back on him. How do I know that's reality? That reality was me. Even though we all have different realities, we've all been saved by the same truth. 2 Corinthians 5.17 states that if any man be born in Christ, he is a new creation, that the old is gone and the new has come. And truth is, I don't even know who that past girl is anymore. Truth is, God has restored my family back together better than it has ever been before. I'm finally talking to my mom. He, she called me the other day and she said, I've never even heard you talk that much. So, you know. You know, God's really restoring that relationship, and I've learned how to forgive my abuser. Truth is, I no longer need alcohol to satisfy my needs or to prove to other people that I can handle what I thought I could. And truth is, in his word, it says that we are beautifully and wonderfully made and that he makes no mistakes. So I no longer have to go find acceptance through man, but I got to find acceptance in God. The truth is, the Bible is the only prescription that I'll ever need to heal any earthly pain I'll ever have. The truth is, I may not have my children right now, but the one true protector does, and that's God. And the truth is, I'm set free from the man who used me, and now I'm being used in the best way possible, and that, that's by our Lord and Savior. Truth is... God's taken me further from my daughter than I've ever been before to show how big he is and how I'm not going to have to go back to Tennessee to get her. Truth is, in 1 Peter 5, 6, it says that, uh, it says that after you suffered a little while, that he himself will restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast. And truth is, it also says in his word that he'll never leave you or forsake you. And even when I turned my back on God, he still pursued me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And I tell you the truth, unless you're born again, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the, and truth, the truth shall, shall set, set you free. free.
The book then tells how God divinely led to start Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge Women's Ministry is a part of the worldwide Teen Challenge family member with over 200 centers U.S. and over 1,200 worldwide. Our Women's Center was founded in 2008 by Pastor, da- <laughs> sorry, by Pastor Jared and Miss Kim Flanagan. Um, we take ladies ages 18 and older who struggle with any life-controlling issues such as abuse, addiction, depression, and eating disorder. We believe addiction is just a byproduct without life, and without life is Jesus and a symptom which is bigger, which is a sin. The Lord wants us to come to him so that he can transform us into something that he designed us to be. As we share in song and testimony, just remember we're not voices of American Idol, but we are voices of true victory. And at this time, I'm going to introduce the ladies and um, tell a scripture that speaks to them, and I'll start. Again, my name is Bethany. I'm How old am I? 28? (laughs) 28 years old. I'm from Carthage, Missouri. I've been in the program for nine months now. And the uh, scripture that speaks to me is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. Hi, my name is Mariah. I'm 19 years old. I'm 20 years old. I just turned 20. (laughs) I'm 20 years old, and the scripture that speaks to me is psalms 4 7 for you have given me greater joy than those with an abundant harvest of grain and new wine hi church i'm melinda i'm 27 years old i'm from macomb mississippi i've been in the program about four months and the scripture that really speaks to me is philippians 4 13 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me Good morning. I'm Kelly. I'm from Burlington, Iowa. I'm 36 years old. Um, the, the scripture that speaks to me is um, Psalms 18:19. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Hey, church. My name is Robin. I'm 33 years old, and I'm from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And the scripture that speaks to me is Matthew 19:29. Jesus said, "For everyone who has left houses or brothers, or sister or mother or father or wife or children or land for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and inherit eternal life." Good morning, church. Um, my name is Paige. I am from Iowa. I'm going to share a little bit of my testimony with you. Um, Shake off my nerves. Okay. um, I've been in the program about nine months. Um, Growing up, my childhood was very um, normal. I grew up in a church. Um, I went to Bible school. I went to church camp. Um, But then as I grew older, my brother, who I was very, very close to, um, actually started hanging out with the wrong people in school, and he um, started going down the road of addiction. My brother was my best friend, like I said, Um, so this was very difficult for me to see him go down this road. I felt like I was watching him window right before my eyes, and I couldn't do anything about it. Um, So I started to lash out at my parents um, because I didn't understand why this was happening. Um, As I got to high school, um, I found my comfort in volleyball. That was everything to me. Whenever I was happy, whenever I was sad, whenever I was struggling, I would go outside and I would hit the volleyball against the garage door just to let out any anger, any emotions that I had um, because of my family hardships that we were going through. Um, With all this extra practice that I was getting, um, I did very well in volleyball. I played all year round. Um, I had scholarships. My my path was set. With the stress that I had with my brother and what he was going through, um, I started partying myself. I started hanging around him more often because I was trying to catch him. I was trying to help him in any way, shape, or form. All I knew is that I did not want to lose my brother. Um, He ended up doing a couple years in prison. Um, He was in and out of treatment centers, in and out of jail. Um, My family and myself were pretty much prepared for a funeral or a long-term prison sentence. Um, as this continued on, I met a man, um, who I became pregnant with after two months of being around him. Um, now, this man was very abusive. He was very narcissistic, controlling. Um, but since I was so young, I didn't know any different. I didn't know, um, what true love was, how a man should treat me. 
Um, I lost my focus in volleyball. Um, I ended up graduating high school by the grace of God. Um, I now have a 10-year-old beautiful, beautiful daughter. Um, with the abuse that was happening, I, I didn't have my coping mechanism that was volleyball, so I fell into a very long-term addiction. Um, I was using the worst kind of drugs in the worst type of ways. Um, I had lost a few apartments. I was about to lose my car, and I knew that if I did not take a step of faith that I was going to lose my daughter. Um, so I remember before I came into this program, I woke up one day, and I didn't feel like myself. I felt like I needed something different. God had planted these seeds within my mind that led me to getting on the computer and looking up treatment. And I knew this wasn't myself because that's not me. I didn't, um, I was still in denial that I had a problem. Um, but I kept feeling these emotions and these thoughts that God was trying to tell me something. God was trying to nudge me into this program. So I fought it for about a month and a half. Um, and then I finally surrendered. I went to my grandparents and I said, it's time to go. I have to go or I'm going to lose my daughter. So I came into this program um, August 7th, nine months ago. Since I've been into this program, um, it's, it's hard every single day that I wake up. But what God has done in my life since I've been in this program has blown my mind. My whole family has been restored. My brother is not in addiction. My, my relationship with my daughter has been restored. My parents get along. My, my brother goes to church. He's involved with the, with the church. He has a full-time job. He's not in prison. He's not dead. I'm not in prison. I'm not dead. Praise God. Um, so um, all glory goes to God. He is an amazing God. And I know that through these struggles, through the hard days, that all things work for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. After I graduated this program, God has made a way for me to go work in an adolescent center in Texas, be closer with my dad, um, and that, that's what I got. Thank you so much for letting me share, guys. Now we'll sing our first song, number one. Teach me to listen. I don't want to see anymore. Give me a vision. You could move this heart to be set apart. I don't even recognize the man in the mirror. I don't want to trade your plans for something familiar. I can't waste a day. I can't stay the same. I want to be different. I want to be changed. Till all of me is gone. And all that remains is a fire so bright. The whole world can see that there's something different. So come and be different in me and I don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern and I don't want to gain this world to lose what matters so I'm giving up everything because I want to be different I want to be changed Till all of me is gone And all that remains Is a fire so bright The whole world can see That there's something different So come and be different Oh, I know that I am far from perfect through you the cross still says I'm worth it 
So take this beating in my heart and come and finish what you started. When they see me, let them see you. I just want to be different. Yeah. I want to be different. I want to be changed till all of me is gone and all that remains is a fire so bright the whole world can see that there's something different so come and be different i just want to be different so could you be different in me Studies have shown an 86 success rate among Teen Challenge graduates. Our pastors believe the winning combination in number one is the Jesus factor, and number two, the length of a 13 month long is why Teen Challenge is so successful. Usually, our ladies start off their day really early with prayer time, reading of the word, daily devotionals, and praise and worship. Some of the ladies that come into the program have never even opened up a Bible before, so that not only teaches them to dig into God's word, but also to apply it to their daily lives. We also believe, firmly believe the power of prayer. We know that you cannot have a relationship with somebody that you cannot even communicate with. We have several different jobs that the ladies can be assigned to. We have office jobs where they learn business and communicational skills. We have laundry and kitchen ladies where they learn responsible women of God and good stewards of what the Lord has given them. We have a classroom where the ladies study the word and accomplish 14 different group studies and to, the, to equip them now and for their future. And they have to learn over 250 scriptures by the time that they graduate the program. Once they graduate, they get the opportunity to intern for Teen Challenge and become staff and become a full-time ministry. During the week at 1130, we pray over prayer cards, and at this time, our ladies are going to go up and pass them out. And we don't pray for our needs, but we do pray for yours. And sometimes, some of the ladies that did come into the program, we prayed them into the program. Their names were on these prayer cards. And the ladies will come around with pens if you need any as well. So we hold these dear to our hearts as well. So I'm going to share a little bit of my testimony with you guys. Um, like I said, I'm from Carthage. I grew up there. I was very into sports um, during high school. Um, at the age of 15, my life came to a complete stop. Um, my sister tragically passed away in a drink, drunken driving accident two miles from the house. Um, my life completely stopped. I stopped going to school. I stopped going to sports. I stopped doing sports. I was varsity. Me and my sister were. Um, you know, I thought that God was blaming me because we really didn't have a relationship in the first place. Um, we stopped going to church. My mom was the choir director at our church that we went to. Um, and so... I was trying to seek comfort in the wrong things. Um, my family always had had stuff available, and they kept feeding into my addiction, and that's where I got it easy. Um, 
By the time I was 17, I was a full-blown alcoholic. Um, I barely graduated high school. The only comfort that I found was down alcohol, and so that's what I did. Um, I became very, very depressed. Um, So they, start, they decided to give me some anxiety pet mil, pills, um, Xanax, and so I started using both of them at the same time. Um, it just didn't work out, you know. I just started going down deeper and deeper into a pit that I started. Um, in 2000, um, about four or five years ago, I found out that I was pregnant. I had miscarriage, put my body completely into shock, and I. I am now a severe type 1 diabetic, and so I thought that God was trying to, to punish me even more because I just felt like I was supposed to be with, with this guy, um, and he was very abusive. He introduced me into the worst kind of drugs in the worst kind of ways. Um, I ended up getting pregnant again a couple years down the road. Luckily, but by God's grace and mercy that she is healthy. Um, she's almost three. She's a little joy of a ball with the little curly hair everywhere. She's beautiful. Her name is Iris. Um, she's, she's just a blessing. She saved my life, literally. Saved my life by, by God. Um, I thought that it was right to stay in an abusive relationship so my daughter would have a father. And now that I know through this program that the only father she needs is the Lord and that he will always comfort her. He will always be there for her. He will never forsake her or leave her. And I know during this program that I have learned the same exact thing. And so not only I get to teach that to her, but she will also learn and to have her children in the future, she will be able to teach that to them. And um, this program is, has saved my life by the grace of God. I never really had a relationship with the Lord until I got into this program. I'm one of those statistics, I can't even say it. I never even opened up a Bible before until I came into this program. And so I'm using it every single day. I get to watch these ladies that come in broken, hurt, so hurt, and I get to watch them grow closer to God. And it is such a blessing that I'm going to be able to stay on his staff so I can watch these ladies grow further and further and with their walk with the Lord. And oh, I just want to thank you so much for letting me share. Um, if y'all are done with your pray <laughs> prayer cards, <laughs> you can hold them up, and the ladies will be gladly to come around and take them. And as the ladies are making their way back, um, if you didn't get a chance to turn in your prayer cards, we can turn them in at the end of the service. We have a craft table outside, and I'll explain, explain more of that as well. And now I would like to introduce you to Miss Kelly, and she's going to tell you about a little bit about what God's doing in her life. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Kelly. Um, like I said, I'm from Iowa. I've been in the program now for about five months. Um, my background is a little bit different. Uh, I was um, the youngest of three children. Um, my, uh, I was born into a broken home. Uh, both my parents were addicts and alcoholics. Um, my parents were also very young. The, uh, they had all of us by the time my mom was uh, 20. Um, so growing up, uh, we, were, we were pretty poor. Um, we uh, moved around a lot. I changed schools a lot. I changed friends. I changed homes. Um, and uh, so with that, like, I didn't know what stability was. That wasn't something I had any idea uh, whatsoever. Um, when I was about five years old, um, my uncle has, uh, was going to move in with us. And I thought that things would get a lot better, um, that my parents, who were hiding the things that they were not supposed to be doing, <coughs> excuse me, uh, would um, stop doing them. Um, but actually, when he moved in, things got uh, a lot worse. Uh, he started doing those things with my parents, 
And he was now the live-in babysitter. So uh, he started doing things to me that your uncle shouldn't do to you. Um, so this went on until I was about 10 years old. And my parents had gotten a divorce. Uh, I went to, me and one of my brothers went to live with my mom, um, who now is really down spiraled, out of control in her addiction. And she is a very um, mean and abusive woman. Um, so when I was about 13, um, uh, actually when my brother was about 14, he had went uh, and left and got his own place. And he came back a few months later to get me um, so by the time I was about 13, 14 years old, I lived with my brother. We were on our own um, to get away from my mother and her lifestyle. Uh, I really enjoyed school. School was always my go-to. It was my refuge. It was my safety. And I absolutely loved my education. Um, so I, I excelled greatly in school. I was on the honor roll. Uh, things were going great. When um, I got into ninth grade, uh, I started high school. And I started doing what high schoolers do. I started experimenting a little bit. I found attention from men. Uh, and I met this guy I ended up getting pregnant with. So now I'm 15 and I am a child having a child. Uh, but I grew up very quickly. I knew that I was gonna have to drop out of school and get a couple jobs to raise this child now. Um, that broke my heart because I did love education and, and I really crushed my dreams to think that I wasn't gonna graduate. Uh, I had met my high school sweetheart also in this time, and um, together we had went back and got our GEDs together. Um, so I did end up graduating. I was very proud of myself. That was a milestone that um, nobody in my family has ever achieved um, through several generations. So I was really proud of myself, and it's always been a dream of mine to go to college. Um, so when I was about 19, I enrolled in college. I was going for nursing. Uh, something that I wanted to do, and I found out that I was pregnant with my second son. And But this time I was really excited. Um, things were going very well in my life. Uh, I was engaged. Um, my fiancé at the time, for us being young, had a really good job. And so this was just, I figured, uh, a blessing. Um, I wasn't really a big believer at the time, um, but I just figured God was, was blessing me for trying to change my life around. Um, when my son was about 14 years old, um, I had found him dead on my couch. And um, my life changed dramatically from that. I thought if there was a God, he would never have cursed me. He wouldn't have given me the life that he gave me. He would not take my son from me. And the devil started really feeding me lies. He convinced me that, you know, if I couldn't even save my own child, um, there's no way I could be a nurse. There's no way I could save anyone else's life. So once again, I dropped out of college. Um, and I went into about a 10 year, 10, 12 year um, depression. Um, so I was in and out of my mess a lot uh, with alcohol um, and uh, a lot of depression pills. I got diagnosed on um, depression. Um, bipolar, I was always drinking and taking medications. Um, however, I did uh, end up meeting my, uh, my husband, and um, I thought for sure that things were going to be different. He was um, the knight in shining armor. This was the blessing that God sent me. Uh, he was very well established in his life. Um, things in my life seemed to be getting a lot better, and I just wanted my kids happy. I wanted my kids to have a life that I didn't have. Um, so I met him, and within six months, we moved in, we got married, things were amazing. My kids were so happy, I was happy, things were perfect in my life, and, and I started to think that, you know, that maybe God didn't curse me, maybe this is, this is really my, my blessing. Um, about a year uh, into our marriage, I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter, and this was his first child, and it was just, everything was going great. Uh, after I had her, however, things dramatically changed. Uh, my husband turned into a very controlling man. Uh, I couldn't never do anything right with our daughter. Um, and I already have this void of losing a child. I, I, and now I got my husband telling me I, I, can't, I can't do anything right with his daughter. Uh, we grew very separate. He, he put me and my other children on the back burner. We uh, no longer existed to him. 
Uh, and I went to what I knew best. I went to what comforted me, which was um, my alcohol, and I down spiraled very quickly into my addiction. Uh, it ended up costing me not just my marriage, uh, not, not just my home, not just my kids. It cost me everything. Uh, while I was in jail um, for uh, something that I had gotten in trouble for, for drinking, um, I started going to a Bible study in, in the jail. Uh, just something to pass time. Uh, they given me a Bible, and I've always loved to read. I started reading the Bible. I really got into it. I got curious. When I got out of jail, I uh, sought after a church, and I met this pastor and his wife, and they're amazing. They took me underneath their wing, and I am uh, just in my full-blown mess, and they led me to Christ. They walked with me. They were my cheerleaders, and I'm just so blessed to have them. Um, they uh, helped me build a relationship with Christ. Uh, everything in my life started getting restored. Um, I got a really great job. I got my own house back. Um, I was get, you know, I found a pro bono attorney um, to take on cases to get my children back that I haven't seen in seven years. Um, you know, it was just amazing what God can do. And so a few weeks before I came to Teen Challenge, um, I got a phone call from my attorney telling me that he had found my children because I didn't know where they were. And he wanted me to come in the office to sign paperwork so I could get my visitations going. Uh, I do have rights to my children. And I was super excited. I got off the phone, but I also knew that I needed to go talk to my church um, because I was um, behind closed doors. I, was, I started drinking again. Uh, you know, I let a lot of pride. I, I separated myself from God. Um, and so I went to my pastor and, um, and, and talked to them. They told me about Teen Challenge. Uh, it took me a few days. We prayed about it. Uh, and it's been the best decision that I made. Uh, I'm here. I'm set apart from everything, any distractions. It is just me and God. And my relationship with the Lord is amazing. And... Um, just since I've been here, he's he's restored. Um, he's restoring the relationship between me and my mom, and my brother. And uh, you know, it's just having a relationship with Christ is is just amazing in itself. And I am so confident that when I get out, He is going to continue to restore that relationship with my children as well. Um, but it's just a blessing to to have this 13 months and to be just so devoted to Christ. And it's just me and Christ. And and I'm thankful that this program allows me to do that. And thank you for letting me share. And now we're gonna sing our second song.
has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood His mercy reigns unending love amazing grace shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbears to shine, but God who called me here below will be So we, of course, we are a nonprofit organization, so that means we do not get any state or government funding. We also don't charge a monthly fee for the ladies who come into a program. But we do raise donations for crosses just like this one. We go out fundraising three days out of the week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We get to walk our crosses. We get to walk into your stores, into different businesses with our crosses spreading about God's good Lord, good word, <laughs> good Lord's word. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so nervous, I don't know why. Um, and we get to stand out there, out front of stores, with our crosses. Rain, shine, hot, extra hot, cold, extra cold. <laughs> spreading about the good Lord. So, like I said, he takes us, he cleans us up. And then he transforms us into something very beautiful, what he designed us to be. Of course, we have a table outside of the foyer. Okay. Just like you would see on our fundraisers. And we encourage you to get a cross or a plaque to remind you about God's redeeming power. And of course, this cross is not for sale. It's for Pastor John to let us come out and sharing sharing about Teen Challenge and what the Lord has done in our lives. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thanks. And we pray above all that God has been rightly glorified here today. And thank you so much. Amen. How many are thankful that God still restores lives? He still breaks chains off people's lives. Amen? He's still delivering. Man, God is so good, isn't he? You know, the, thing, the pattern that I saw with, with the testimonies that they gave was when we weren't with Jesus, our lives were falling apart. But when I turned to Jesus, things began to get better, right? I'm telling you guys, that's, that's just the truth. I, I also love 
Jesus takes our reality and he changes it, he changes it to our truth. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Praise God. Man, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed by hearing their testimonies and hearing what God's doing in their lives. And I hope you all are blessed too and encouraged today. If you, have, if you have some family members or friends that are out there and you're like, man, I just don't know. Are they, is there any hope for them? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Don't give up on them. Keep praying for them. God wants to touch them. God wants to change them. God wants to transform them. God wants to make them new. That's right. Okay? Don't you dare give up on them. Amen? Amen. Well, this time we're going to go ahead and take up um, an offering for this group. I, I believe that they came. They, they delivered a, a powerful word to us. And we want to bless them. Because I want to see this program keep going. Because I want to see God continue to touch people, touch ladies through this program. So, I hope you brought your money. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let's, let's just pray over, this, pray over this offering as well. Father, we are so grateful, Lord, for the work, the life-changing work you're doing through Teen Challenge Women's Ministry. God, we thank you for each of these ladies' lives that share with us today, whether through song or through testimony. God, we are so grateful for the work that you're doing in them. And God, we know you're not done yet. And God, we know you're going to continue that work because, Lord, your word says you will. And so, Father, we just pray, God, your, your divine guidance over their lives. We pray, God, for the blood of Jesus Christ to be over them, Lord. God, they will keep their eyes and their minds on you, Jesus, and on your word. God, help us, Lord, as a church to respond to the words that were spoken. And God, help us to cling to you even closer, knowing that we need Jesus. We need Jesus in our lives. And without Jesus, it's hell. Not just, not just in eternity, but even here on earth. So, Lord, help us to cling to you. Help us to seek you. Help us to know you more. And, Lord, we do pray for those people right now, Lord, that are struggling, that are hurting, that are out there in the world, Lord God, allowing the world to abuse them and hurt them and destroy them, allowing the enemy to speak lies into them. God, we just pray, God, you begin to break chains off of their lives and change them and transform them, Lord, and bring them into your kingdom. Bless this offering now, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you so much for being in service today. I don't know about you, but if you smell strong enough, you might be able to smell some Mexican food. And so we're going to go back and we're going to enjoy some Mexican food um, today with, with these ladies. Um, please come, come in and, and just join in the conversation and fellowship. Get to know them. Love on them a little bit. All right, can we do that? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pray for the food here. That way when we get in there, it's not, it's not a big... You know, hopefully things are set up and things are getting going. But you will have to ask permission from my wife before you start getting in line. Okay? <laughs> Otherwise, she'll tell you to go sit back down. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to pray over the food and pray over y'all as we, as we conclude this service. God, thank you so much again, Lord, for these life-changing testimonies. We thank you for your power, for your faithfulness. We thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. God, we praise you, Lord, for this meal that we're about to partake of. We thank you for everybody that's contributed to this meal. 
And God, we just pray that you will bless our time of fellowship and bless this food. And God, just help us to honor you in all that we say and all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. One more announcement I want to make real quick before y'all get up and get out. Um, if y'all didn't know, Fred McKenzie passed away this week. Um, his funeral is this afternoon at 2 o'clock in Holden, Missouri. And so um, you guys will see me leave a little bit early from this dinner, but that's because I got to go preach a funeral. Um, so if anybody can help stick around and help get things cleaned up, since Crystal and I and all of us will be gone, um, yeah, that would be very, very, uh, we'd be very grateful for that. Okay? All right. Thank you.